Yo, what's up beautiful people? This is Michael Hausenberg speaking today. We're going to talk about the Open Policy Agent in Cloud Native Development. Open Policy Agent is a CNCF project and it's really cool. Uh, have a look at the documentation there. Lots of different use cases uh, are possible with OPA and uh, very often you see it used in a security context but also policies any kind of compliance really and uh, beautiful website here with all kinds of useful um, help and docs there what is the language the philosophy um, the reference awesome deep dive into how to use the language and um, also cheat sheet if you're unsure how to write uh, Rigo and can be a bit different to what you usually do um, having imperative languages at hand but uh, it's really awesome and the number of, of uh, application areas use case areas very often you see that in the context of communities and uh, but also other use cases there in this context um, i talked with two practitioners all right and uh, now we have uh, a really interesting conversation with uh, two guests today. It's uh, Steve and Tyler there. Um, we're going to have a look at the use case and concrete application of OPA um, for something really interesting. So welcome to the show and uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, let's go with Steve. Sure, I'm uh, Steve Wade. I'm platform lead at Metal. So we are a business banking proposition based out of London. Oh, thanks for being here. And Tyler? Yeah, I'm Tyler Arbeck. I'm a site reliability engineer at Red Hat's Open Innovation Labs. Cool. Perfect. So um, I stumbled upon that, I think the first time was on, on Slack, I believe. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm super interested. And I, I saw this, this uh, application of, of OPA to essentially yeah, deal with the, <laughs> the uh, onslaught of uh, Kubernetes uh, changes. Uh, on, what was the, the, the basic starting point there? What, how did you go about this? You want to go first, Tyler, or me? Yeah, yeah you're yeah, going. Wanna... Um, so for us, uh, we, we've been on kind of a journey of, uh, of innovation from kind of an existing platform to a new platform. Um, and uh, the new platform that we started on, we migrated all the apps, uh, changed the way that we went about um, deploying those apps. And at the time, the most recent version of Kubernetes was 1.14. Um, and then we made the somewhat controversial decision, well, I did, and then lived to regret it, as you're going to find out in a second, um, to go directly to 117 and then forgot that in 116 they deprecated a load of API versions. Um, so the, the way we deploy is based on a GitOps model. So we pull resources into the cluster and uh, we base quite a lot of it off of Helm charts. So as you can imagine, we span a 117 cluster up Flux sat inside the cluster, pulled down those resources, and then none of them worked. Um, mm -hmm. And then we went on this journey of like constantly patching all of the different Kubernetes resources um, to get this thing to work. And then I thought, actually, there must be a better way of doing this. And then I thought, OK, well, why don't we use something like OPA, because that's going to do policies. And we can essentially define a set of policies for each deprecation that comes along in each different version of Kubernetes. And then as part of our CI job, we run uh, OPA policies against um, our Helm charts or against our YAML files, and we can block merges to production or master, sorry, um, based on the output of those OPA policies. So we we kind of cut ourselves a few times, um, specifically around 1.16. Um, I looped in uh, and created this um, CI job that essentially used comp test and then wrote a bunch of rego policies for each um, Kubernetes version. And now I've kind of open sourced that, and now there's a rego policy per version of Kubernetes. So from our side, we're going to, well, I'm personally going to maintain that repo um, for new uh, deprecated APIs. So hopefully that people that are going on the same journey don't get bitten as much as we did. Right. And for, for anyone who's not familiar with GitOps, essentially that's the, the enforcement part. So developers would send in a pull request um, saying, like, you know, this is the new Helm chart or the new. YAML manifest, whatever, and OPA would be used in that part to essentially say, well, this violates 
it has been deprecated, whatever. So you you're not going to merge that, or you're not going to recheck that. Exactly. Nice exactly. Well, cool. Tyler, what uh, what was your take on that, or how how did you get involved? Yep. Yeah. So so very similar. Like previously, I've been living in uh, you know I, I work at Red Hat, so I do a lot of work on on OpenShift. Uh, so I was living back in the safe world of of you know we were running on three dot eleven, so Kubernetes one dot eleven, and I had none of these concerns. Everything just worked all the time. So we were we were kind of safely behind the curve on, on 3.x. And then and then we, you know, the, the big jump to to our 4.x strand came, which came with it a, a big jump. Uh, and introduced not only on the OpenShift side where we changed some of our API version naming, uh, which caused some issues, but then we started getting closer to upstream, which also had its own deprecations coming. So I, I remembered seeing uh I think, a tw I think a tw it was a tweet from, from Duffy come out that said like, hey, this this is a thing that will help help solve this problem. So I started looking at the the deprecate uh, uh, policy you know file that was out there, and I said, I, I could do something with this. Uh, so very similar, you know, we were we were working in kind of a, a GitOps manner, and and with even with right. some of our repos that we just had in uh, on GitHub, I said, hey, maybe I can maybe I can tie these things together. Like now when rather than like dealing with it as it hits me like i can make sure that this thing right. doesn't hurt when changes are coming through so i you know rather than just having to to self host a bunch of stuff i said well all the code that we deal with is in github let me just tie this together with some github actions even better there's already other actions so i i don't even really have to do much of the work i just need to tie the workflow together to make this happen right. so right. I, I took i took some of the the helm github actions that were already available i took the conf test the one that was already available for both for both Helm charts and just you know static YAML files, and then I just started knitting everything together, um, which was which was really good because we, you know we were kind of coming up on the the one dot sixteen curve, so we were able to I was able to I was able to put that together, and then we were able to start tying that together on some of our repos and took care of it for for us for like very little work on my end, um, but you know so, then I started I was like well you know I don't just run things in OpenShift I've got a bunch of little Kubernetes clusters over here, and then I started right. dealing with like 117. I was like, well, I've only got 116 stuff back <laughs> here. That's when I saw Steve stuff, and I got excited. I was like, oh, now I can just loop through a bunch of files and say like, hey, this will run on this version of Kubernetes, but not this one, and things like right. that. Right. And because we had it not twice, and again, not sure if everyone is familiar with that, uh, would you like to give us a quick, um, you know, one-on-one what conf test is that our viewers also understand yes, what conf test yes, so so, so conf test is uh, rather than having to have a, a running OPA, you know, instance anywhere, you're able to take the the rego files that that you know the the policies are written in, and actually just test that th test those things locally against your against your code versus having to have it you know this act active instance of anything running. Right, and I suppose uh, the reason why I like this use case so much is because it's one the few use cases I'm aware of that is not like directly related to security because very often you have, you know, uh, we go whatever in the context of some kind of like security, uh, you know, access control or whatever related thing. And this is, you know, one of the few uses that I'm aware of that, you know, actually doesn't have to do anything with the security and it just shows the power and the awesomeness of, of Rego. And in that context, I would be interested what your view on that is. Like I, I personally, I like to write Rego files. I, I cannot say that I, I find a lot of other people who share that enthusiasm. So what's your experience? <laughs> like when you, when you first started, like is there anything that you know you compared with other programming languages or other systems like that's like different or how did you find writing legal? Uh, I think for me personally it's it's pretty self explanatory, right? If you can kind of if you if you're used to writing code, it's not it's not that that different. For me it's like a little it's a little bit like programming. It's a little bit like if you're writing Terraform. And you kind of merge the two together, and it's kind of consistent like that. Um, I think, from a community perspective as well, we need um, some kind of centralized repository for commonly used rego policies. Because my guess is that everybody is doing something very similar, uh, and we're all reinventing the wheel. So if we create some kind of like what Helm has with the Helm charts, but we have kind of like rego policies or something like that, right. um, and we can all kind of drip feed them in there, and then. Some of the things that we're doing for deprecation, some other some other people may be doing for you know like ingress definitions and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and, and actually, the CNCF is currently putting together the CNCF hub, so maybe that is something that uh, could be of use there as well. Because you're you're spot on, right? I mean, this 
kind of like, okay, let's you know share different cover stuff on on GitHub or whatever. It's probably not the best way to you know help spreading spreading the word there. But yeah, cool. That that, that makes a lot of sense. Is there anything from from your side? Is there anything that Red Hat has in like some? I mean, you have the operator hub, right? <laughs> that's that's yeah. like one hub. But uh, is, there, is there something in terms of Rego that you folks plan or? Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of like I'm I'm digging at that right now. It's like, what are we doing? Do we have any any ideas around that? So nothing that I'm aware of right now. But I'm mm -hmm. actually I'm kind of seeing what 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 our plans are there. If we if we've got anything, uh, I completely agree though. Like having a centralized location to find some of this stuff, rather than yeah. us just like crossing paths on Twitter would be would be great. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> I mean, the, the playground in all this, the playground really just got. A big, big uh, improvement with the 0.18. Like you have a lot of examples there, but you know this is like a few examples. That's great for for starters. But you really want to have this kind of like I have problem X. You know, has someone else already done that? Can I? You yeah, know, that? I kind of think it would be great if you could if you take Tyler's example of what he how he used the rego policies that I created for his use case. If we could just have a repo with all of the rego policies, and then Tyler or whoever can just consume those in whatever fashion they want you could git clone them or if we can come up with a more uh kind of smoother implementation then we could pull those down some other way well that's awesome yeah. so we not only learned about that use case but we we solved all the, the world's problems uh <laughs> next up is, is corona we'll never be we're gonna solve that <laughs> next time around we'll carry the corona. Um, well, yeah yeah i mean we we can uh, always uh, look big big smaller breaks so to say but i think the, the hub is a, a really first, good first start first step um any other ideas or any other insights around uh, opa and or regal in terms of you know other use cases that you might be looking in or might be extending we, we have one that, that we're using uh our side at metal so obviously a lot of the kubernetes based uh ecosystem is all around labels um, so we're using Rego to define a strict labeling taxonomy uh, that you have to adhere to. And then same kind of flow with the GitOps principles. We run the conf test, test suite against our label our label compliance Rego uh, and make sure that all of our kind of quote unquote custom resources that we deploy all have standardized labels. So all of our monitoring and alerting and logging and everything is all gonna, all the dashboards will always work from now until the foreseeable future. In, unless you can bypass comp test and the rego policies. So that's one thing that we're doing. Awesome. I think we should definitely also consider um, whenever, you know, the, the next uh, uh, KubeCon or whatever is to have a uh, OPA related birds to Fed or whatever to come come together there as a community and, and put these, these ideas around a little and then see what we can do together um, Yeah, to, to get that to the next level. I think there more and more people I see interested in and, and definitely you know, good practices and hubs and, and stuff like that help help the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, and I, I definitely agree. Like like you mentioned before, it's like a majority of the stuff I've I've seen done is is mostly around security. But like I, I see like endless possibilities out even outside of security to, to use some of this for. You know, very similar use case I've seen it is is enforcing, you know, making sure a bunch of labels are in the right places. So the other things are paying attention to them. That kind of ties into some of our operators that, right. that we've been working with. Exactly. You know, Opo make sure that all the labels are, are there so before things get into the cluster. And then the operator's like, hey, I've got something that I need to be paying attention to because it has these labels. Yeah. And, and I think uh, to some extent, I, I very much believe in without you know wanting to push that, that paradigm on people, but having GitOps, uh, I mean, that goes really well together, right? Yeah. This, this is something yeah. that really, you know, somehow naturally seems to be <laughs> working quite well. So maybe that's also a good practice that's good for people to consider, hey, you know, maybe you want to use that together. Cool. Uh, any last last words, any last uh, ideas or messages? We are on the roll, so maybe there is some other, <laughs> some other thing I'm overlooking or was thinking of right now. From my side, I think it's great, right? Like Tyler says, the the possibilities are endless. Like for us, we we're quite heavy Terraform users, so we're actually looking at what we can do with Rego from a Terraform perspective as well. So we've seen the value from a GitOps perspective. We're essentially driving infrastructure changes through pipelines. So why not put Rego policies in the pipeline to stop us from breaking things? And Tyler, something last word or last sentence from your side, or you? 
no, no, nothing, nothing for me. I just, I, I have some work to do now that I've got uh, Steve's updated, you know, policy files. I've got to get those. <laughs> yeah, those you and I could do some. We should do some collabing and try and jam some stuff together. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Feel awesome. free to reach out. I'm, I'm happy awesome. to work because I'm, I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, folks. Uh, that was really awesome. And yeah, have a great day or great evening, wherever you are. All right. You too. Cheers, guys. Catch you later. Thank you. Bye. Take it easy. All right. So thank you to Steve and Tyler out there for sharing uh, this awesome use case and uh, hopefully some inspiration for you as well. Um, that's about it. I wanted to give you an idea of what OPA is and what you can do with OPA and uh, hope to see you around next week.